pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, tonight we have uh, John Callahan, Danielle Jouen, Mar Martha Majeski, Bob Cooney, and myself, Mark Donovan. We also have our manager, Lori Goetz, uh, uh, assistant manager, Valentina Mitterer, Bill Brennan, our solicitor, and uh, Paul Bettinger, our engineer. Uh, we had a couple of executive sessions that uh, I'm going to add to your agendas. It's uh, July 9th and today, July 10th, uh, to discuss personnel, property acquisition, and litigation. Um, Starting off the regular business meeting with the consent agenda. Uh, this is a motion to accept the minutes of the Board of Supervisors June 12th, 2024 business meeting and June 27th, 2024 workshop meeting, including all the de departmental committee, commission, and council reports as posted and received by the Board of Supervisors for the month of June 30th, 2024. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Treasurer's report and payment of bills. Um, motion to consider acceptance of the treasurer's report for period ending June 30th, 2024. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Any discussion from? Yes, so for period ending June 30th, 2024, we have a general fund balance of just over 6.5 million. And um, year to date, we are at 30, just over 38% of our expenditures, and we're at about 77% of our revenue. And we're basically, I mean, we're, we're in good shape. We're right on track. That sounds about in line with last year. Yeah, and oh. um, all the bills are reviewed and recommended for payment. All right, great. Um, any more discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion to approve disbursements dated July 10th, 2024. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 On to our board discussion items, subdivision land development. Uh, item number one is zoning hearing board application 505 Valley Park Road. The applicant is seeking relief to allow for expanding of the existing non-conforming barn for limited residential purposes. And there's the sections listed below. So the um, the applicant, I believe the applicant is in attendance tonight. Great, so I will, I will let, if you just wanna come up to the microphone and introduce yourself if you wanna give them a, an overview, but basically, um, the applicant is seeking various relief uh, to convert a barn that's on his property into um, an additional residential dwelling. I'll let you cover that, but the choice, the decision in front of the board is to uh, make a motion to oppose the application or simply remain neutral. And good evening, I'm David Colvin, 505 Valley Park Road, so just up the street. Um, when we bought our property three years ago, uh, we bought our property in Schuylkill Township specifically for a barn uh, that sits on our one and a half acre property. That barn we envisioned would be used one day for our son who turned 16 today, uh, who has special needs. He has intellectual disability, autism, and a very rare seizure disorder. Uh, and he's gonna live with us for the rest of his life. But we hope to use that barn as some semi-independent living for him. Uh, and so that's why we bought this property and spent a, a lot of money on it. Um, things have changed a little bit. My wife's father uh, is uh, terminally ill and we're hoping to advance and accelerate the process of renovating the barn so that he and his wife can live on the property with us so we can be there to support them in their time of need uh, and they can also reciprocate and support us with our son. Uh, so we fully respect and appreciate the zoning ordinances and everything uh, within Schuylkill Township. Uh, we didn't know that the barn was non-conforming when we purchased the property. Uh, but what I can tell you is that the, the plans that we have to uh, augment the barn uh, are as minimal as possible uh, with as little disruption as possible. There's only one impacted neighbor and that neighbor has signed a letter uh, attesting to the fact that they don't oppose what we, what we want to do. Uh, and we would ask for your favorable consideration on the application and move it to our friends in zoning and we can talk about it there. I'm happy to answer any questions you'll have. I don't have any questions. Does anybody else on the board have any questions? Um, I'm, I'm looking to remain neutral. How does everybody feel? Same. Same. All right, cool. Thank you all. All right, good luck. Appreciate Thank your time. You. Thanks.
Next one is 1500 State Road, Aqua, Pickering, Preserve, Waiver of Land Development Request. The applicant seeking a waiver of land development for their proposed expansion project. The Planning Commission has reviewed and recommends approval of the waiver. Do we have any discussion on this? Great, okay. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Gina Gerber. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Aqua, this evening. Um, this is a property that you all are probably pretty familiar with. It's the East and West Pickering Water Treatment Plant. Um, we are here this evening with regards to a request for a waiver of land development. Um, I'm going to briefly walk you through the improvements that we are proposing as part of this project, just to give you an idea of how minimal they are. And then I'm also joined this evening by Brennan Kelly, who can speak a little bit more to the specifics should you all have any questions with regard to what's being done here. Um, the improvements that are being proposed are in two phases. Uh, the improvements are with regard to the east water treatment plant. First phase is with regard to an expansion of the existing filter building. This building is not within the floodway or the floodplain. The second phase is the addition of a new clarification system, which is basically an open tank, and expansion to an existing electrical room. All in, the total increase to the impervious coverage with respect to this site is less than 1%. It's 0.78% increase in the impervious surface. So very small amount of actual impervious surface is being introduced with this particular project. Um, Aqua has determined that this improvement is needed in order to be able to continue with the viability of this with this particular plant. They had some um, issues with regard to a large storm event a couple of years ago, and this is their way of being able to resolve that and make sure that this plant can continue servicing the three counties in which it currently serves going forward. So much needed improvement um, in terms of what the actual impact is to the site. It's very, very minimal to the land disturbance. Um, there is DEP permit approval for this already. So they've already obtained that in order to be able to move forward with the improvements. Um, they have a pretty expedited timeline. If I'm not mistaken, you all are looking to do this sooner rather than within two years. Sooner rather than later. Yep, about two years. Um, I can tell you that all of the site will remain compliant with the zoning requirements. In fact, it's way under in terms of the building coverage. Um, they're proposing 4.6% when all is said and done. Um, the ordinance permits up to 40. So there's a big discrepancy there. And in terms of the um, lot coverage, they're only proposing 32% or up to 60% is permitted. So well within the confines of everything that's allowed on this particular site. So the, um, and just to, sorry, clarify one other thing, the stormwater design is underway. It is something that will be submitted to the township for review and approval as part of the permitting process. But the infiltration testing has already been done successfully on the site. So that's where we're at. All right, thank you. Uh, do you have any, anything else to add or any questions from the board to clarify anything? I know this was asked um, at the planning commission meeting because I, I did attend the planning commission meeting. But Paul, can you explain why um, land development is needed for this? I mean, this, this sounds we, like it's needed? it's just a uh, an addition. So why would land development need to be done for this? Uh, it's a commercial property. So that automatically triggers any kind of land development. But you know, in our review letter dated June 13th, uh, 2024, based off the sketch plan application, Martha, we do recommend uh, to it that the board of supervisors provide a waiver of land development contingent that the applicant goes through the stormwater management and grading permit application that covers stormwater and zoning. Okay, I did read that. I just wanted it on the record. That's all, thank sure. you. Okay. Sure. No, normally you see um, uh, request for waivers for individual items in the land development uh, process mm -hmm. under the Saldo. Uh, the, the Saldo authorizes land development itself to be uh, to be waived in toto. Now, it's normally in circumstances where there's no negative impact on the public, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in a situation like this, and the, and land development is a defined term in Saldo, including commercial, mm -hmm. anything commercial. Yeah. Uh, I just want to make. Uh, again, remind the public that I'm, I'm an employee of Aqua Services. I don't provide any support for Aqua Pennsylvania, but I do service um, you know, Aqua Pen uh, North Carolina, Virginia, and uh, Texas. So I just would, I, I know we don't need a, a vote per se on this, but I'm we going do. to recuse myself from any discussion tonight. If, if, we are, um, if we are waiving land development, we do need a vote. Yeah, well, I'm so. recusing myself from that. <laughs> okay. 
Any further clarifications, mm -hmm. comments, questions from the board? Um, all right, I'm gonna make a motion to uh, waive the land development process for this project uh, at 1500 State Road. Uh, do I hear a second? A second. Now, uh, is there any further discussion from the board, from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you. Old business. Let's see. Uh, make a motion to approve Appendix A to decision of June 12, 2024, granting preliminary subdivision approval with conditions to Reeves Family Real Estate LP and Polig Builders LLC. Do I hear a second? All right, thanks. Um, is there any discussion on this item? There, oh, there are uh, some copies of the appendix here if anyone would like to see them. And you can pass them around, look at them. Uh, it, uh, I, I will clarify that it does generally just provides clarifications to some of the uh, what were considered vague conditions on our uh, approval last month. So uh, it's, it's mostly just clar clarification. It does not truly amend the approval. You guys know where I stand on this. One of the big things. Uh, that, Mike. Oh, sorry. I'm saying you guys know where I stand on this. One of the big concerns I had there was the the impact East Phillip. And uh, when I look at item five, where it says certain engineering comments and interpretations have been satisfied or, or are no longer relevant, applicable, given the preliminary plan approval issues of the township board of supervisors, such as, and it refers to the qualifications of uh, Lisa Thomas, the EAC recommendations, and review comments of SAFE, Joe Fiacco, SAFE Engineering is our traffic company. Um, I, I mean, where I stand on this has been the same since day one is that, uh, you know, I feel like we're compromising the health and welfare of East Phillip and that those comments uh, are applicable and, and should be upheld, and I don't think we are. And I, I don't want to sit quietly by and, and approve uh, this so I'll be uh, voting no on this one um, because he did clearly say that uh, well you know what Bob you voted no last week or last month so you shouldn't even need to vote on this you could say that but I'm still going to say what I said I know. I'm just saying it, all yeah. this was was clarification from last month and you already voted no okay well, I'm going to say what I need to say and I'm going to put it on the record this time with my dissent uh, in writing what I have to say uh, that the uh, we were cautioned by the engineer and to say that his issues are resolved I'm not okay with because this wasn't in there last month. This is new. So I do want to comment on it. All right, we I, I would provide a clarification on, or a, a counter to that. The, uh, the can, clarif I, can I finish what I'm going to say and then you can counter anything? Yeah, it's fine, yeah, that's okay. fine. Yeah, go. All right, I so thought you were done. <laughs> no, 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 I've got a couple paragraphs okay, here I, because I'm yeah, not good winging it. I'm just going to read it. Then go ahead. Uh, so we were cautioned by the traffic engineer that we'd be contributing to an unsafe condition. East Phillip was designed and built for as a cul-de-sac for the number of units on that street. It's not laid out to be a throughway, uh, which is what it will become if we allow this to go through. I'll still stand strong that the township made many mistakes that got us into the predicament that we're in now. Uh, when we allowed the developer's lawyer to write up the PRD ordinance and approve the ordinance along with a sketch plan and the zoning map. It was brought up last month that uh, somebody in the audience said that looks like spot zoning. I've always had my concerns with that. Uh, <clears throat> and I think we did something very wrong back then and I don't think continuing to do wrong is gonna make it right. So I know that there are serious concerns about litigation but I'd rather do the right thing and pay the price than continue to do, do the wrong thing and put our neighbor's health and safety at risk. I'm convinced that uh, we were dealt, we were sold a bad bill of goods. Uh, we bought it, shame on us. The zoning changes combined with the language in the PRD, I think are the root cause of why we are where we are. And again, our traffic engineers said that we, <clears throat> that what we are doing regarding the use of East Phillip as a throughway is unsafe and not necessary for this development. So again, I see no reason to uh, keep making it easy for the developer to gain in profit at the risk of our residents. So, 
That's it. I'll attach this to my dissenting vote. Thanks. Um, no, I would provide a counter to a couple of those things. Um, the proposed uh, proposed access through East Phillip would not be a throughway. There is a proposed gate there, and a gate does not constitute a throughway. Second of all, number five, the clarifications regarding comments from our consultants. Some of our consultants provided comments that were beyond the scope of their general uh, authority to make, and this clarifies that the, any of those comments that were beyond their general authority to make, including things that are not related directly to our ordinances, are irrelevant to the application and the approval. That's, that's all I would clarify. No. Uh-oh, counter. No. In. I'll just add that if you have 16, 18 homes on a street and you're going to add another 51 through that, I do consider that a major change to what that street was designed for. So I'm opposed. I think it's it's wrong. It's a wrongful take, I believe. And I think it was based on the mistakes we made in the past that we're paying for now. And I think we're continuing to do wrongs to cover up the wrong. All right. Um, so there's been a motion, a second, uh, some discussion from the board. No Any other further discussion from the board? Anything from our consultants? Public comment. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. All right. Thank you. Old business number two, uh, discussion on the convenience store with gas ordinance. I'll let Lori take the lead on this one. Okay, so this is a continuation of the conversation that we had at last, last month's workshop meeting. Um, the workshop meetings are non-voting meetings and the full board was not able to be present, so this is on the agenda so that we can continue that discussion and see what, if any, direction the board would like to give to the staff and the consultants. Um, oh. Open it for discussion? Yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, I wasn't on the board uh, back when the, the gas station with conven convenience store convenience gas, store convenience gas, convenience store gas station, what ordinance was passed. Um, it does appear as brought to our attention by our residents that there is some inconsistency and, um, you know, based on collective recollection, recollection of, of the events that transpired in passing that ordinance, it does not it, it seem as though there was an intentional discrepancy. Um, it seems like the most expedient thing would, um, to, to rectify that would be to render those two ordinances consistent um, with the 200 feet from the property boundary. Uh, we have, um, as Paul mentioned at our workshop, we have done a review of all of the, the neighboring townships and their and municipalities and their ordinances, and it uh, ours would still be the most restrictive ordinance in terms of placement of a gas station with respect to residential properties. Um, so we are certainly not diminishing that. We are we will be um, adding to that and making that more conservative. Um, I have concern with more substantively changing the ordinance um, without uh, additional expertise and, and independent um, guidance as to why we would make a different setback versus the 200 that we already have in our ordinances. And I, I am concerned that if we were to do so, it would delay the enactment of that ordinance change. So that would be my direction to staff. Agreed on all points. Ditto. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to add anything. Well so, said. Thanks. So then I suppose I I just have, um, we can do one of two things. We can prepare it just, we can prepare it to make the language consistent. Now the only question I have is we've been talking about the changing the word from uh, dwelling. residential dwelling to residential district. district. Yeah. But the beginning of the sentence in the gas station ordinance says no lot may be within 200 feet. The convenience store with gas refers to the pumps. Now the reason for that is because that was added in. There didn't used to be anything in the ordinance pertaining to pumps. So do you want the pumps to be 200 feet? Should the pumps be the measuring point or should the lot be the measuring point? So can you explain what the gas, the pure gas station is? The pure gas station ordinance has no lot maybe within 200 feet of a residential 
And lots. some other things. Yeah. No yeah. lot upon which a gas station gas sits. Gas station. Okay. okay. No lot upon which. So if you have Micro. a lot. Sorry. Micro. I apologize. Uh, so no lot of, So just hypothetically, if you have a lot and you wanted to put a gas station on that lot, then you would need to have some intervening commercial property in between the gas station and the most, the closest residential property. Or, or something else. Institutional. Commercial, whatever, whatever. non-residential, non-residential non use. Non um, or something that's yes. dual <coughs> zone, Correct. right? So my, and then my um, recommendation on this would be, I, I believe the intent in 2019 was to govern the pumps. Right. Um, so I, I do think if you change residential dwelling to residential district, you would be making it as consistent as it can be with the gas station. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would note and that. If, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. We have to be careful when we're changing, making changes to zoning ordinances, and, and, and Bill and Paul can chime in on this, but we have to be careful that we don't eliminate a potential use from any area in the township. Mm -hmm. And if you change, you get dangerously close to that if you change the word pumps to lot. Um, I, I can imagine there's locations in our township where you could still site a gas station with a convenience store. Uh, it, so we went have we actually it. made that determination? We have gone through it. We have gone through it. If you yes, with the two hundred the two hundred feet from a residential dwelling, yes, we can with the pump. With the pump. But yes. if we but were the lot, the lot drastically. But have we eliminated it from the town? I think we've we. When we looked at it, we uh, the the residents were asking for five hundred feet. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not. That's not what I'm looking at. Right. So that's what. Yeah, no, but that's what we looked at when we did our our analysis of it, and that basically limited it to uh, just a very handful of properties, and you still don't really understand how it would be situated mm -hmm. with it. So it, it, that was when we looked at 500 feet, okay. and then I know then that now we're talking about 200 feet again. So um, I don't I don't know if 200 would be any different to, to allow any more. I know 500 was very restrictive. But we're, when we were talking about, when we looked at it, so the the 200 feet from the pump would not be, would not eliminate all of the properties. If we did no lot, maybe mm -hmm. within 200 feet of residential district, I mean, that, that that's very restrictive. Yes. So it leaves almost, when we looked at it, and I know you were looking at 500 feet, yeah. but when we extrapolated that and, and looked at it, okay, but if we were looking at, the lot because he was focused on mm -hmm. the distance the, he was focused on the pump mm -hmm. so if you look at it with the lot it doesn't leave very many areas of if any but if we yeah. already have i'm, I'm we, just thinking we, of a couple intersections in our township and i'm surprised i'm surprised that i'll i'll turn this off I, I mean i'm just thinking of a couple intersections in our township and i'm surprised that that's the case for by for us for example i think they subdivided that that could be I'm not giving anybody any ideas. But the I don't think that's there. commercial. Why, why wouldn't for us just be, com be commercial? There's residential across the street. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which is within oh, 200 so feet. So we're calling the street. Okay. It, yeah, it's, it, it pretty much eliminates it. But if it already exists, does that matter? You mean if the actual station exists? Or if the ordinance for the gas stations gas exist. Station. Right. What you're saying, what you're saying is that our ordinances have to allow for everything. Yes. But if it already exists and it's non-conforming, uh, if if we change the ordinance and it already exists and it's non-conforming, doesn't it, that cover us? Yeah, but I'm not talking about it, existing gas stations that are non-conforming. What Paul was saying is that if we change the ordinance in this manner to change, make it lot rather than pump then we could be eliminating the ability for that to exist in our township. What I was saying is I, I was thinking that there were lots like, like the area by Forestas, for example, that were com surrounded by commercial that could actually fit that definition. But, but um, Mark is saying that it could not because of the fact that the 200 feet would cross the road and then it would be adjacent the to a residential 
is a residential lot. The road's not a yeah, the but, road's not a lot. But, so but my, they're, they're but my question is lot. is if it already exists, if we oh, change no, it's, the ordinance, it's forward looking. It's it's forward looking. So if if everything went conforming, okay. if it's okay. because we have a fair share fair share responsibility okay. in Pennsylvania to allow for basically any use somewhere. Okay. And it has to be in the future if we ever had fully conforming lots everywhere across the township. What does that look like? Did we eliminate a use? And then we get so, we, we uh, perspective on. use. So what yeah, you're saying? I think use. I think maybe the maybe the clarification you need to make is the prohibition. The prohibition is on future use. Not if we already have 14 gas stations in the township. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter no. if we are eliminating the ability for additional gas stations. Yep then we are in Correct. violation of the law. Yes. Okay. okay. Given that, I want us to do what's not going to make us in violation of the law. <laughs> so if that is the case, then I would say keep it the pump, but make it 200 feet from the property boundary. And my biggest concerns with them are the USPs, the underground storage tanks, and the gas pumps themselves. I mean, I don't know about how you guys feel, but those are my, my largest concerns with those things, and locating them as far as we can legally away from residential properties seems to be our goal within the bounds of reason like if we if we do expand it like everybody said we we got to have uh, some kind of independent expertise weigh in on it so that was my other concern too beyond just the pumps was the vents that actually come out of those underground tanks that's another source of benzene which is really what we're concerned about so it may be worth considering not only just the pumps themselves but whatever is venting out of the tank whatever could be leaking the thing we actually care about so worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. Yeah. And and I agree because I don't think that that if the intent back in it was in nineteen mm -hmm. was to locate the pumps a certain distance, it wasn't really pumps; it was emissions, right? Yes. Okay. I mean, we think we believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right. So just to be clear, we're going to draft an ordinance revision to change the word dwelling to district in the convenience store with gas ordinance. And that is and we'll bring it up again and going to go. We'll bring it up again in further discussions if the board wants to move further on that. We can talk about it in a workshop, involve the public, and uh, also maybe an independent expert. And, ru and run it by the regional planning committee. Mm -hmm. You know what? You just brought up a really good point. If something is allowed in the regional planning group, when we were working on the billboards bill, you remember that? The regional planning committee really liked where Schuylkill Township put that electronic billboard because now that it's there and it's within the region, no one else um, has to be able to put that up. That's not true. East Pikeland's getting a billboard because we're being forced to by the courts. We just lost a 10 year battle with that. <laughs> really? Even with the, the yeah. regional planning? Yep, they, sent, they told us to um, F ourselves. Uh. <laughs> you know. Okay, so that was actually put to the test then. So okay. if, I, if I can restate That's that, one of the concepts of regional planning was as long as one member of the regional plan had the use, the other members didn't necessarily have to have the right. use, and the courts have said, that nice idea, but no, no it depends, thank you. It depends on the use and who has the money to push a court suit, lawsuit. Okay. What's that, Lamar? Um, it's uh, outdoor something or other. Oh. Yeah. Um, they're, uh, okay. they're, wow. they're doing that. So it is an ironclad. Have, there, there isn't you know, any. It, it's helpful. It, it's yes. Not, it, it, helpful if there are, if you have no apartments and everybody around you has apartments, you probably get away with it. But if it's a more narrow uh, constriction uh, of, of, of the use, uh, it's not going to save you. If you, you, you know, it, okay. It's, it's, yeah. it's a soft help, soft, okay. soft bit of help. Little no, I was just, I was edges. just thinking about the, <laughs> the whole gas station thing but never mind if if no it's, we wouldn't okay. we wouldn't get away with on gas stations okay try just it was worth a try it was a very it was good it was, a, it was a fantastic thought we just but we <laughs> okay yeah we, we just tested that um, okay for a decade uh could yeah 
It's yeah. outdoor advertising have, versus uh, East Pikeland or something. East Pikeland has not brought that up in the regional planning committee. I'm not surprised. <laughs> okay. No, but it'd be, it would be an, an interesting topic of discussion. It would. yeah. And I could reach out to my esteemed colleagues in East Pikeland and float that idea by them before I suggest that we include it on an agenda item, but it would be interesting. Yeah. But, and, and it was one of the reasons that Rusty for many, many years was touting people to join the regional planning committees that, oh, you know, if you do this, you know. It's more likely to float if you have all like certain types of types of housing or something. So like if you have multifamily homes mm -hmm. in the, right across the street from where you're trying to insist that you don't need to have more multifamily homes, you can, you can do that. But if you're. If you're touching on commercial uses, that tends to irk the courts. Okay. Because most municipalities already restrict those those uses very heavily, and um, as we do, <laughs> and uh, so we end up with not a lot of wiggle room left over once we get What's to that point. What's that? Where's it located? Amco. Oh. Okay. In front of the Amco. Yeah. Yeah. They got their permits in and everything. It's all approved. Done. Okay. We, yeah. So, um, I'm right. sorry. I, I, oh, no, no worries. That's, I, it's I a good thought. I apologize it's, that I, I really thought that that would be helpful, would, but turned I, out to not be. You know, about six months ago, I would have thought the same. And then, <laughs> <laughs> but you learn. So, uh, any further discussion on this one? All right. Um, new business, consider approval of roadway improvement project. Laura, Laura you, you know where to move from yep. the, okay. Yep, um, uh, roadway improvement projects. We got uh, Township Line Road, Green Lane, Jug Hollow Road, and Creek Road here. Um, Lori. So um, this is before you, so normally every year we do come to the board and, and look to do some additional capital road projects after we've done paving. Uh, you'll recall that due to the price of the bids this year, we rejected the paving bid, so we're not doing any paving of roads this year. We're doing oil and chip, but we're not doing mm -hmm. our paving project. So in lieu of that, Nick has done, um, we've we've moved up some projects that have needed to be done. Would you like me to talk about it? Or would you just yeah, do you want to give a little a little uh, overview? Hi, Nick. How are you doing? It is I fantastic. I see you to see back you. there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the four projects. Our two favorite roads, Martha Township Line and Creek Road. Sh shoulder that. failure. That's Martha's folks. So she drives a bus and down. <laughs> so it, it's a long story. <laughs> but we we have sh you're shoulder make failure. It short. <laughs> yeah. There's shoulder said, failure on, on them two roads uh, that we should again. Not as bad as different we spots, had. But yes. Okay. Yeah. But it, it needs attention. Okay. Right? Um, Jug how. Um, we're cleaning out a culvert, as you know, and mm -hmm. actually the backhoe is on kind of on private property because mm -hmm. there's no other way to access the culvert because mm -hmm. the, the culvert runs underneath Larry Palmer's house. Mm -hmm. So in the cleanup, we've de eroded the bank on, on private properties. So I talked to Chris and he's willing to sign that we're allowed to go on his property to restore his bank. It'd have to be reviewed by you. Yeah, we'll get into that. We'll, but we'll he, that. he's okay with it. Um, if we have one more clean out down there, we're gonna lose the whole bank down there at, on Jug Hollow. Mm -hmm. But that's the only way to access it, to get mm -hmm. the silt out of the stream because mm -hmm. if we go around the back way, there's no way it's all on private property. It's all choked down, so. And the final one is Green Lane Sinkhole. Um, it's over a sewer line, it's 25 feet deep. It's been happening basically since the development went in. Valley Forge Sewer Authority doesn't want anything to do with it. They say their pipe's fine, but this is where we're at, so. Is this the one that you guys have been going back and forth with for years? Yes, yeah. You keep filling it up? With, uh, uh, we stabilized it a couple times, Bill, and then uh, in one middle road, it keeps sinking. The sewer authority said they TV their line. There, there's nothing wrong with their line. They're not accepting responsibility for it. So. So 
So the idea here is we obviously had a we had a budget allotment for uh, paving. We're not going to spend that money on paving this year, so we'd like to do these projects. Yes, please. So if anybody has questions or they want to look at it, you know, we we have time. You know, if you if you guys want to look at it before we do it, or or we can we can go ahead and I'll make a motion to approve the uh, roadway improvement projects on the Township Line Road, Green Lane, Jug Hollow Road, and Creek Road. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All right. Well, uh, any further All discussion? Right. Any other questions for Nick? I, I guess did we notify the sewer authority and tell them what our intent is? Yeah, I'll talk to them. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Easy. <laughs> Curbing. Curbing. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, look, we looked at this at the budget last year, man, Lori. Uh, there's been some drainage problems down there. Um, so we'd like to do the thousand feet down the spring lane. Our, our five year plan, Lamar, is now 10 year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, we knew that was yeah, going to happen. So. Yeah. And this is a budget item. Um, yes. So it is a budgeted item. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I've got no real questions. Does the board have any questions, comments? Mm -mm. Public. Um, I will uh, make a motion to authorize the Township Roadmaster to begin Spring Lane curbing project. Uh, do I hear a second? I'll second. Oh, go ahead, Bob. I'll second. Fight over it. It's, it's fine. <laughs> 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 no, it gets high. Um, all right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Let's see. Item number 300, new business, is uh, approval of an estimate from Kinsley Construction, the amount not to exceed $27,280 for paving at Dawson Drive. I think to, Paul and, you want, and Lori could you want me to fill you tackle in on this one? Yeah. Um, what happened so, there? <laughs> yeah, so if you, you'll recall, so this is, uh, so Dawson Drive is technically a borough road, but we maintain it. Well, half of it. Half of it is. Yeah. We maintain the entirety of the road due to a long-standing agreement that we've had in place for decades, I think, at, at this point. Um, a couple years ago, the borough, they started a construction project on the Elan Down apartments mm -hmm. um, and caused, there was a lot of, cons all of the construction traffic was on Dawson Drive. So it's been worn down as a result of that. So. This price here reflects a basically a three-way split of the total cost to pave the entirety of the road. The borough's ordinances require the contractor to pave half width. We'd like to do the entirety of the road. So we're going to pay a third. The contractor is going to pay their part. And then there was a contribution from Kiko that they paid a contribution basically in lieu of repairing the road after they did their um, the connections. So they just repaired their cut-ins instead of repaving it. So Nick, refresh my memory, going forward after this project is done, wasn't there some sort of an agreement that the borough would, that we would maintain the road surface, but the borough would maintain all of the uh, stormwater inlets? Uh, uh, no, I don't, I don't believe that's correct. Our, our uh, agreement was we took Dawson Drive, and they took City Line. Everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. Because at one point, Dawson Drive was our residence, and that island was never developed. Right. So that's why we we did that. Okay. Years ago. Okay. But now, once we get it done, we're going to have to maintain. Okay. All the stormwater. Pictures but I thought things. because when the apartments went up that there no. was some sort of an agreement or talk about that. It might be the basin that they own, but I'm, I'm not sure. That was years ago. Oh, maybe that's it the, then. The basin, okay. that they yeah. were, which they're not maintaining. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Is it, do you, in your opinion, do you still think it's still a reasonable agreement? Cost sharing? Um, yes, I do because basically there are residents that we're servicing because the backside is the apartments. So they don't exit the backside. That's the back of the apartment. So most of the residents, all the residents are on our side. Right. Yeah. We're in city line, it's 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 both residents. So yeah, it's 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 a pretty good it's a pretty good maintenance agreement. Okay. So
Okay, um, I do need a motion on that. It just, it fell onto the next page. I'll make that motion. To approve that estimate, I'll make a second. Any further discussion? Hey, can you mean township line that runs down the side or is there a city line near that? that when you said we did a swap that we take care we, of. We do Dawson and they do, and they take care of city line Avenue. Okay. Off state road. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which connects to the high school. Yeah. Correct. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was right near that property. Sorry. All right. Any further discussion, comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, number four is another one for Nick. Uh, Line striping hasn't been done since before COVID. Yep. Um, couldn't get the contractors in or whatever. So we kind of went to guide mark. I think everybody uses guide mark now on the municipality. So we got about 65,000 feet of four inch single yellow line that needs to get redone. Mm -hmm. So we're going to wait till after we do the oil and chip so we don't have to bring them back. Mm -hmm. So probably if you guys authorize at the end of August. All right, I'll make a motion approving the street driving proposal from Guidemark Inc. in the amount of $8,040. Do I hear a second? Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, Thanks, Nick. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Nick. All right, um, item number five is uh, Consideration of approval of a one-year contract renewal with Red Tail Restoration in the amount of ten thousand five hundred dollars. Yes. So this is the this Red Tail is the company that does our um, invasive plant management at our all of our township park properties. Um, the EAC has recommended renewing the contract. We've had them for a couple of years. Um, yeah. Okay. Easy enough. It's a budgeted item. I'll make a motion to approve that one-year contract renewal. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number six on the agenda here is um, authorizing the township manager to sign Alloy 5 AIA contract. I'll make that motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Um, discussion? So Alloy 5 is the architect that is handling the, um, their, they did our feasibility study for the municipal complex renovation project. And they are currently in the design phase. The board authorized them to do the design phase to come up with actual designed plans for our renovation project. Um, this is just the this is the official agreement. The board approved the proposal several several months ago. Uh, we've been going back and forth. The lawyers have been going back and forth on the AAA agreement, and it is now in final form and recommended for approval. Bill has given it his stamp of approval. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any further discussion? Any questions? I'm just, so I don't see Mike, oh. I'm, I usually review EJCDC documents, not AIA, AIA, but I'm just looking at the insurance requirements and I'm surprised that professional liability is not a little higher. I mean, are we, are we, are we looking at this like making sure that we, this is market in terms of it's 2 million. Sometimes I see 5 million for architectural services. I think we bumped it up from what they, it was in the form. Yeah, I think okay. we did bump it up, but again, this is just for the design. This is just for the plan phase. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, for the plan phase, so are these designs the design. that they're going to build, they're going to draft? They're going to draft them, yeah. And then someone else will construct them. Correct. So if they draft if them not. wrong, mm -hmm. then we would seek them, say, Go after them for professional liability insurance. Yeah, because this is that's their errors and omissions insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay. We had a, a, a waiver of that which we took out. We had the way to limit yeah. their liability mm -hmm. that was taken out. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the intent of this is to um, we would we would execute this. I didn't see any costs in here. It's all TBD. Is the costs were covered in the proposal in the proposal that was, that was approved a couple months ago? Yeah. Okay. Is that in, then incorporated by reference in the agreement? No. Um, it said uh, the I'm, owner's budget for the cost of work is defined in six point one TBD. 
the other, the owner's anticipated design and construction milestone dates, TBD. And aren't these, th are these things set forth somewhere else that where they should be incorporated by reference into this contract? Yes, in the, I'm trying to pull up the proposal. Do you want to move on and I'll pull that up and we can come back to this? Yep. Yep, we'll move on down the agenda and we'll come back to item number six. Okay. Uh, that's, oh, hold on one sec. Uh, okay, that motion dies. Um, move on to item number seven. Consider approval of, quote, in an amount not to exceed 43500 for a replacement police car and $16,602.71 um, for equipment. Um, I'll, let's discuss it. And we'll. Yeah, uh, it will almost certainly be less than that. I don't, I didn't get the trade-in value for the car that we're getting rid of. So last year, just as a guide, we got $4,500 for the trade-in. So that would come off of the 43.5. And the equipment would just be the outfitting, uh, transferring equipment from the car we have to the, to the new car with some may have to be new because of the model change and it doesn't fit from one year to another, but most of it will be transferable. <clears throat> Do you guys have any questions? Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Um, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the quote in the amount not to exceed 43500 for re for the replacement police car and $16,602.71 for equipment. I'll second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number eight, um, consider approval of the Axon Enterprises quote in the amount of $6,246.80 for police body cameras and data storage renewal. Chief, thanks. Uh, that's for data storage, cloud storage, and maintenance of the equipment. It's a recurring cost that we have every year, mm -hmm. pretty much. All right, I'll make this a motion. This is a budgeted item, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. that's what I thought. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve that and second. do your second. Thank you, Bob. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And nine, um, approval of conditional offer of employment to Selena Velez to the position of permit clerk office administrator dated July 10th, 2024. I'll make that motion. Do I hear a second? Uh, second. Would you like to touch on that? Anything? Brief? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any uh, questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you want to text out or we can go back to the AMA? This is what's happening here. Okay. Um, we will uh, briefly go back to item number six, authorizing the township manager to sign the Alloy 5 AIA contract. So the, um, the proposal that was approved a couple months ago is also in the workspace as Exhibit A. These are norm these sh They would have been approved in conjunction, but we were still working on a legal review at the time of the proposal. So all um. of the costs are in the proposal and the proposal actually refers to the AIA. And the reason that those items in the AIA say TBD on the dates, part of that was, so the construction commencement date TBD, other milestone dates TBD, those were because of us actually, because I, they set out a, a schedule and they had construction set for the end of this year and I said you have to pump the brakes because this project is largely contingent upon grant funding so that's why that's in there mm -hmm. um, because we're we didn't want to commit to a bid date that they had proposed are, are there items there though that should not say TBD and should instead refer to exhibit a I can, um, we I can have them I can have them revise that and refer to exhibit a instead of TBD and the dates aren't going to 
Which one specifically are you referring to? Are you I'm referring sorry, to? I'm just looking at, I was looking at the missionaries. So, so the budget, the budget um, for the cost of the work? Yeah, 1.1.3. 1. 1. Oh, it does, it does refer, it says, as described more fully in Exhibit A. Where does it say, 1.1.3? 1. 1. <coughs> the owner's- oh, it's in the line above it, yeah. Yeah, but that's only for that one. Yeah, I can have them fix that. Mm -hmm. Should we table this for next month? Or do we or approve do we, it or conditional? Or is this time sensitive? Uh, we can table, I mean, they would obviously like to have it right. signed. Um, but sure, we can, we can table it. Are you comfortable approving this? I'm having a hard time not taking off my lawyer hat right now and looking at this, because it's what I do all day. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that it's not my role here. Um, but um, there's some little cleanup, like some spacing and some periods. It looks as though this version still has track, either has track changes on or was a PDF made of track changes. Mm -hmm. It's got the lines on the left. And I think that's just the nature of the way that we put it into the, into the workspace. Yeah. Um, I was satisfied that the numbers were established in the, the agreement and that mm -hmm. those numbers would be worked into the document. So okay. my main concern was the numbers. In terms of the, the dollar? Dollar. Yeah. Um, I just want to look at, can we look at, can I just take a look at the limitation liability provision? What is that? I've been bitten by architects for big industrial projects. I'm sure Al, you know, Alloy is great, but. Um, mm -hmm. I've got no problem tabling it. Just yeah. Clean it up. So why don't we table it? And yeah, it'll be easier. Why don't we table it and you can send me any, any comments that you have on it? Okay, I'm sorry, guys. No problem. Uh, all right, that concludes that one, I suppose. Yeah. Great. Um, I'm number 10, discussion of the textile recycling program. Martha, would you like to? Okay, so yesterday, um, Lori and I went up to Eatontown, New Jersey, um, to visit um, Helpsy, which is a textile, uh, a company that does textile uh, recycling. And um, the reason why we went there is Patty Lynn from the Chester County um, Solid Waste Authority. She is the um, recycling coordinator for them. Um, when we had done our small textile um, recycling program earlier this year, she said, you know, would you guys be interested in doing something larger? And um, would you be interested in doing a pilot program for Chester County? And I want to introduce you to this company that does this kind of stuff. So she said, I'll set up a, a tour of this place. So Lori and I went there yesterday and um, unfortunately their air conditioning wasn't working. So it was a really, really hot day in a oh, warehouse. I would have loved it. Um, but it was, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know about that. This was, this was really <laughs> tough. So um, this company last year in um, 2023, they did 31 million tons I'm sorry, they accepted 31 million tons of textile waste and recycled or reused or resold 90%, 95% of it. Wasn't that, wasn't that what it was? 95% of it. Um, mostly what they do is they keep the textiles as they are and they just find people who are willing to resell them. They're basically a, a, resell, uh, a reseller distributor. They work with um, large companies such as uh, Thread Up and Rent the Runway and Goodwill. And um, they showed us their sorting facility. You know, when things come in, they said that they receive approximately one um, tractor trailer load every week and one tractor trailer load leaves every week. So it's just like a big, gigantic circle with them. So they sort things by um, 
brand and condition and then they box them up based on what the, they have really close relationships with their customers um, for what they, they are looking for. And we just thought it was a really nice company. We met with one of the co-founders um, who's very enthusiastic and very passionate uh, about what they do. And um, I would like to um, work with these guys. Um, I don't know what else to say. I mean, do you guys have any questions? I think that um, what they do for uh, what they would do for us, it wouldn't cost anything for the township. Um, they come here with a big truck if we want to do an event. They will come with a big box truck. Um, they'll pull up and their person takes care of everything. Um, we don't have to do anything except maybe direct traffic. Um, it doesn't cost anything. Um, and when they take it back to their facility and weigh it, they actually pay us for it. Not much. Lori will probably get a cup of coffee out of it, but you know, they, they, you know, we get paid for, you know, people's trash. And, um, since our newsletter comes out in August, I'd like to do one in the fall. Um, if you guys are on board with this. And I can take care of all of that. Sounds like a you, great idea. You want to do it as an event or as an ongoing contribution? Is one better than the other? Well, here's the thing. Um, that's a really good question, Bob, because Lori and I actually had this discussion in the car on the way home. Um, we don't really know. This is the first time we've done this before. So to kind of get a feel for how our residents are going to respond to this, we thought doing a one-time event and see how everybody feels about that. And then they also offer boxes. You know those, those um, textile clothing boxes that you see? Um, I know a lot of them are trash and a lot of them are, are, are a hot mess. Um, these people have promised us that they're not gonna be a hot mess if we put one here. Nick, I see you already. I know you're you're, you're saying, Martha, don't do this to me. You see the cardboard? Uh, I see the cardboard. And uh, you know, I, I will absolutely, positively have a conversation with this woman because I will tell her if I hear one complaint from our roadmaster, well, you're going to be removing this box. It's the yeah, I know. I know. I know. What would the What would the bins look like? They're They're big blue. They're on their website. It's okay. called Helpsy.com. Um, they're 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 like this color blue, and they're They're big. Um, they have a warehouse in King of Prussia now, so they, they're relatively close by. So I can, I know, Nick, I know, I see your face. I swear, I see your face. Um, so anyway, the whole idea was that we would do this event, kind of get a feel for how residents feel about it. If we get a really good feedback from it, then yeah, maybe possibly put up a, a box here. One of the other things that they do is um, if we have a lot of residents that would be interested in this, they will do free curbside pickup for you as well. Do they, but, do they need a minimum amount to make it worth? We don't have all the details. We don't have all the details of, the of contract, that. The municipal contract service. And I'm, so I, I think it would be premature to talk about that right. as a, even an option for us right now. It's, yeah, it's not an option at this point, mm -hmm. but it is something that going forward, that's why um, Patty Lynn wants to use us as a, um, a pilot program, because if we are pretty successful with this, then we get other municipalities to do this, then we can actually get that curbside free pickup. And it is free, because I do know that there are other companies out there that do curbside pickup, but you have to pay for it. It's mm -hmm. like 10 bucks a bag. Um, but this is this would be totally free. Mm -hmm. So, um, but did that answer your question? Yeah, I okay. think it's a great idea. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Um, Sorry, Nick, but I do think it's. Big old family. <laughs> well, we're going to well, start. Event. We're going to start with an event. Yeah. We're not going to. We're not going to go. You know what, Nick? You you may you may be on permanent vacation by the time that comes okay. around. So, but. Just curious if the EAC has given any feedback. It's an environmental good thing, so wondering if uh, 
they they are anxious to hear about our trip. Good. So they they have they liked it. So, but um, no, I have not reported and told them about our trip because we only took it yesterday. Gotcha. So okay, that's it. Thank you. So quick question for you all: doing a one day event probably isn't going to turn out too much of a bring out too much of a turnout. People just aren't going to show up for that. At least in terms of if you did like a two week lead up. I don't know if there's any kind of appetite to do another drop off on site for a shorter period of time, not three months like it was last time, but just do a two week to kind of be like, advertise it as an event, but if you can't make it, mm -hmm. come drop it off beforehand. It's kind of a thing to try and just spur as much as we can. Yeah, so one of the things that they did say they would do, and that was something that I was gonna think about doing, they will. They have those, the, those big laundry tubs with the big wheels. Mm -hmm. They're like six by six by six. Mm -hmm. And they said that they would drop them off into the lobby so that um, if we could have them here for a week or two before so that people can drop stuff off so that when their guy does show up on that day, all he has to do is pull out the, their carts and load them up on the truck. So yeah. that is an option to do as well. So, yeah. Is our township staff okay with that? <laughs> Having a giant bin in our lobby or wherever it would be? Martha's in Martha's enthusiasm has persuaded her. We always have some giant bin in the lobby. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Whether, it's a coat, whether it's a coat drive or a yeah. textile yeah. thing or Make whatever. sure Alloy builds in gigantic bin. We're yeah. going to call it Martha's, Mar Martha's drive space. And she, what's that? Is this an inside container they're talking about or outside? Outside. Okay. Um, Chief, we will absolutely make sure that this does not interfere with any of the code drives, any of the uh, 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 code blue or food drive or anything like that. We will make sure that it will not interfere with anything that you guys are doing. Okay. Okay. Great. Yep. I will work on it and report back to you guys. Great. Well, um, we have no resolutions or ordinances to consider today. Two minute reports. Um, start with John and work our way back. Uh, nothing for me. I missed All another right. EAC meeting. Then Danielle. I'm trying to remember if I attended every any meeting since the last. Was there? Oh, I did. Party? I'm sorry. I attended the open um, space committee meeting, and there was nothing. There was really nothing. Nothing to report mm -hmm. from open space. Um, regional planning. Regional planning committee. Um, nothing memorable. Apparently. Well, next month you'll get to talk about the billboard decision. What? Yeah, next <laughs> month we can talk about the billboard decision. No, there, I mean, it really wasn't. I mean, they were talking. Right. I mean, they had discussions about sandwich board ordinances and, um, sure. We're, we're talking about bamboo ordinances. I think I mentioned this at the workshop, though. I feel like I mentioned this all this at the workshop, so I, I, I don't. I think I have anything to report. Yeah. Martha, besides the textile. Um, I The Historical Commission is continuing to work on the mid-century modern um, um, buildings that they want to add to the ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, they have narrowed it down to, um, I guess, about 10 of them, I think, at this point. Um, so they, they're continuing to work on that. Um, Dorothy Bedford from our Historical Commission is working on the, you know what, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the word, um, the 250th anniversary. Semi-sesquicentennial. Uh, thank you. There you go. Um, <laughs> and they're, they're, the, the county is working with, um, Chester County is working with Montgomery County and the city of Philadelphia, and they're all kind of coordinating events for the 250th and Dorothy is reporting back to everyone. Um, they're in the very beginning stages of it, so I really don't have anything to report to you guys because they haven't really done anything yet. But when they do, um, I will make sure that I report to you guys on that. Mm -hmm. um, that's the Historical Commission, the EAC. Um, the biggest thing that came out of the EAC meeting was the um, the Jonathan's coming before us when July. it is the July workshop.
um, to talk about the uh, clean energy plan and some of the action items that he wants to do and have us kind of um, not necessarily coordinate them, but uh, kind of prioritize the list and even take a look at the list and see if there's just things we don't want him to work on. So he's gonna be coming before us to talk about that. And the biggest tree um, in, uh, in Schuylkill Township was sent out. Um, have you gotten any responses yet? We have. Oh, uh, fun. Oh, <laughs> fun. Fun, we wanna see who has the biggest tree in uh, Schuylkill Township, so measure your tree. So oh, that'll, be, that'll be fun. Um, Thank you, Tom. And I think that's it, yeah. Um, did, who went to Planning Commission? Oh yes, I did. I went to Planning Commission, but we met with them tonight. Um, and that was Thanks. all that was discussed. Yes. Okay, great, thank you. Bob. A little bit to add to the uh, OSC, Open Space is still working on outreach, but they won't have their meeting this month due to a lack of quorum. That's it. Thanks. I, I don't have anything. They, I'm sorry, I You're should fine. have reported on this. The one thing that they did, did discuss at um, Open Space was whether there was a need for monthly meetings. Uh, they had contemplated maybe doing quarterly meetings just because they doesn't appear they have enough to, to discuss at the monthly meetings. Um, All right. Thanks. I don't have anything. On to Township Manager. So just one quick thing beyond uh, the things that we discussed tonight, but the uh, PennDOT is, obviously, I'm sure everybody is aware at this point of the detour on uh -huh. Whitehorse and Pennypacker. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have an estimate on when that's gonna be done, despite my repeated requests to hear when that's gonna be done. Um, they don't seem to be making a, a huge amount of progress. The estimate they gave me uh, a week ago was that it was going to be a month. Mm -hmm. And the reason it is being closed, the reason they've made the decision to close it, according to PennDOT, um, it's closed 24 seven because they had too many near misses reported. Um, yeah, I witnessed one. So it was one. a safety concern. Mm -hmm. I, I witnessed one. <laughs> Uh, one of their yeah, workers, one of their workers got um, almost sideswiped. I mean, it was like this far yeah. Yeah, by right. by a driver, just you know, okay. pit, very angry that he had to stop. Yeah. So, are there any future plans for that bridge to be totally replaced and widened? This is just repair, correct? Correct. And I, I don't know. They haven't informed me of anything. Right. Anything else? Uh, all right, uh, Chief of Police. Anything else to discuss tonight? Yeah, actually, I do. All right, uh, cool. Yesterday, we got a call of a large amount of U.S. mail that was thrown in a storm drain up in Valley Forge Woods. Uh, road department helped us out. We got the grade off and we recovered the mail. Some of it's from our township. Some of it's over in Oaks. It's going to be mm -hmm. another nightmare as we went through about a month and a half ago. Um, they're stealing the checks out of mail that's sitting in mailboxes, wash the checks, write a different amount, different uh, payee. <clears throat> sometimes it's in Jersey, sometimes it's in Philly. It, it just, it's a mix and match. Uh, we have a description of the car, it was a black Mercedes. Um, we're still trying to get some ring camera coverage to see if we can get a better description. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to be working with the postal inspectors over at the Southeastern Post Facility to what we, today I had one of the officers run around and identified all the victims, notified them all so they could contact their banks and stop payment. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's, I think it's going to be an ongoing thing because they found out that it works. So we'll, we'll do our best, but just to let you know, uh, we'll put it out on our Facebook and maybe on the township website. For people, if you're going to write a check and put it in a piece of mail, go to the post office, put it inside. Don't put it in the blue box outside because that got burglarized this past year also, and they took all the mail out of that. So it's a shame things have come to this, but it is what it is. I've got a, a, a vendor in Virginia that I've sent hundreds of thousands of dollars of checks to that were washed and cashed, all insured. We got, you know, nobody got stung, but... We went to electronic payment wherever we can because of it. Yeah, electronic payment is, I think, the best way to go. But mm -hmm. the, 
older residents that are not used to using that. It's, yeah. it's not sometimes not feasible for them. But I just wanted to make everybody aware of that. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks. Paul. Uh, yes, uh, just two items. Um, just the supervisors know the uh, the MS4 permit renewal was submitted on behalf of the township at the uh, end of June. Uh, we haven't gotten any feedback or approvals yet, but uh, hopefully it's going to go well. Uh, additionally, uh, we're hopeful that there's going to be no need for future PRP plans. Um, mm -hmm. So crossing fingers there. And uh, one thing that I, I failed to mention when we were talking about the, uh, the Dawson Drive is that we've coordinated with uh, 140 Dawson Drive, uh, Deckman Pumps, uh, Pico will be doing their trench installation on July 20th. So we wanted to avoid painting the road black and then having a trench pulled right away. So it's going to work out well time-wise that uh, the road will, the, they'll put the trench, the connection, and the road will be painted black. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thanks. Um, actually, I don't know, Paul, if this is, if this is for you, maybe not. The traffic light that's out here, you don't have anything to do with traffic lights, do you? Nothing. Okay. No. Uh, the timing on it is just, it's still terrible. Even though we have the, the new radar and everything, I'm still sitting at that light waiting to turn right. This one right here? Yeah. I think some of that may be due to the road being closed in July and the traffic. No, it was part of that. I mean, for those of us who leave this office and, and you know, there. 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, Sitting at <laughs> sitting at that light, it does it doesn't detect your car, it and so I did. Yeah. I thought that that was part of the project, the green light. Yeah, it's supposed to be project. Yeah. It's not. It's not. It's definitely okay. not. not yeah, seeing it does my not car. detect cars. No. <laughs> what? It doesn't detect my car either. So. Yeah, I, I, I'm definitely invisible, um, and. I don't want to confess this on camera, but we, I have we been, presume that people may be running that light. I, I have been tempted to, to turn right on red. Oh, it, on it that does light. have that feature that it detects when a car is supposed to it's detect supposed when a car is there. To be, yeah. Yeah. It so, might need to be adjusted. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll look into it. Thank you. I don't think that one's been reported. I, I don't know. I'm suspecting perhaps not. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll check into it. Okay. Yeah, we'll check into it. Well, that's done. Uh, that would be wonderful. Follow and I'm up, sorry I pointed you. at you, Paul. I uh, thought that was yours. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, do we have any discussion on agenda items for the upcoming workshop meetings that we haven't already? So for July, we have agendas. July we have the clean energy. I have nothing else. Um, is will everyone be in attendance for what's the July? The, I think you're going to be out of town. I'm going. I think I'm going to go to Street. But what's the date of it? It's July twenty fifth. I I will be out of the country. I am also out of the township and unavailable. Okay. Anybody else? I'll be here. You're here. You're here. You're here. Cool. Okay. Great. And what time am I plugging into that? This month? Seven. Seven. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm going to be not in attendance. I won't be virtual. Yeah, we didn't do that. It's not on the agenda. Any other items? Not for for workshops right now. We can think about it. And see where we go from here. We'll, we'll probably have we'll probably have more discussion on the gas uh, pumps for a future for a future thing. So. But other than that, um, seems like we got nothing. Um, I got. Did you reschedule time to talk about the plastic bands? Because I know that didn't get talked about at the workshop I missed last the month. Plas you said plastic. The, the bands. plastic no. ordinance. We did not get rescheduled. We did not talk about that's, that's it. Been, but did it get rescheduled for no, a different workshop? It's, not. it's postponed for another workshop. We can throw it on next on this month. Well, not if you're gone. I guess we can wait till you're back then. If you would want to work on it and have it done by the time I come back, <laughs> I, that would be oh, awesome. Oh, gracious of you. That would be Fantastic. amazing. Yeah. I'm glad you volunteered. I think you and Martha and Bob can Thank put you. your heads together. How oh. did I open my mouth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll talk about that too. So you want us to add, so we'll add. Either, either this month or next month. Whichever. Whichever you think. I mean, you tend to have a mixed crowd. Um, all right, no announcements. Actually, I have one. Oh. I forgot. 
I got an email um, this morning, and I think Lori, you, you got it as well. Um, the Domestic Violence Center <laughs> of um, Chester County, as you guys know, mm -hmm. uh, they have the lighting ceremony yeah. um, with the tree that they planted okay. here um, every year. And I got a date for that. Give me just a second. I think it's October 10th. Yes, it's Thursday, October 10th. And they are asking uh, permission from the township. What date? I'm sorry, October 10th. It's uh, Thursday, October 10th. We don't really have a time. We let them pretty much take care of it. Um, Is that something within it, it, Lori's discussion to coordinate? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Would you like, um, I can't remember how long ago it was that Amelia came and made a presentation. I don't believe she came last year, but she offered to come and kind of talk to the board about the event and, you know, how it's grown and what she's done. I don't, I don't think we, that we need that. I mean, um, Martha and I have been there for the past couple of years. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I think we'd be really Sunset. nice if we could do something to bring a little bit more attendance to it. Um, it's... It's kind of it's kind of sparse. Yeah. Let's think on it. Okay, All that's right, it. Well, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. Public comment. Any updates from the fire department or anything that you'd like to We're bring? Have up? a birthday party in a month and a half. There you go. <laughs> Who's birthday? The fire department. Fire company. Oh, just the fire company. Yeah. Huh? How many years? Seventy-five. Right on. Seventy-five years. Did you, your large corporation, or your Thank you. I take it there's no more public. What are you comment. guys doing? Oh. Throw a birthday party. But yeah. I mean, what like what what? Cake stands. No cake. No stands. I can't go upside down anyway. <laughs> do, do, do you need a band or uh, do you have any gambling? Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's a surprise birthday party. Everybody's surprised oh, when they get there. <laughs> <laughs> it's really uh, it's all based upon contributions from private donors. So yeah. If you want to pick we'll see party, where it goes. Yeah. yeah. holding a party, but they tell you you have to bring the cake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Enjoy your second. Second. Alrighty, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you.